Oh, okay. So let's so let's let's get started. Um, let me see if I can see here. Now, first of all, I can see must see myself. Okay, yeah. That's if I stay away from the far enough away, and my head doesn't get cut off. Okay. So what are so th so this is going to be a class on kind of a, a slightly unusual class on quantum mechanics, and it, it's really aimed at um. Say aimed at kind of several different populations. And it's interesting to hear from a lot of you about your uh, different different backgrounds. So I think a lot of you are coming at this with some different kinds of backgrounds, but but in general, it does seem to exactly the sort of thing where I, I hope you'll be able to get something out of it, though different ones of you may be getting different things out of it. The um, So the, the the plan is that for, you know, for mathematicians, I think often have no, um, don't actually actually hear about quantum mechanics or learn about quantum mechanics when, when they should. So, so, so one thing to do is if you're a mathematics student and haven't heard much about quantum mechanics, I want to teach you some about that. But at, at the same time, while teaching you um, so, so some interesting new mathematics, which you probably don't see in your regular classes. If you're a, a, a physics student, I think you're probably a bit maybe maybe like me. So when, when I I actually started out by studying physics before getting more into mathematics and um, you know, I really, really love quantum mechanics from the beginning, but the thing that I found, I, I found it, you know, very, very hard to kind of figure out kind of what was going on in this class. What was the kind of the logical structure of why, you know, people writing down these formulas for Hamiltonians or momentum or whatever, and there's clearly some interesting structure there, which I wasn't being told about. And it kind of took me many, many years and decades of being interested in this over the years to kind of to start to appreciate some of the structure, and I and I so I wanted to teach this class here at Columbia. I started teaching it at some point quite a few years ago, and with the idea that well, I'll I'll be able to um, explain this stuff and, and, and some of these things which I've I've learned and some of the structure people don't always hear about. And as I taught the class, I actually realized there's actually a huge there's there's actually even much more to that than I had kind of realized. I, I I saw some kind of applications of this kind of mathematics to teaching this, but you know as you as I thought about teaching it and about how to explain this stuff, I kind of came up with, I realized there's more and more things which I'd never kind of realized about how this fit together. And so I, I really enjoyed teaching the class in, in, the, in the past, I ended up writing a book about it. And that, that's really the textbook for this class. And that's most of what I say is gonna, in some sense, be in the book. So I'm not gonna, in the, when, when I'm talking here, I, I, I may not actually, I may skip lots of details, assuming that, look, you can, you, 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 you can read about these things, but and you, I, I want to give you more of a chance to kind of stop and, and ask questions. And I want to kind of more spend the time here kind of telling you, um, guiding you as to what, 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 what to pay attention to if you look at any of these, um, if, if you're looking at these notes, notes in the book. And this, so part of the goal of, of this class, of this course this time, is also to spend some time um, rewriting material, which is in the book. The, this semester, I think what, what I'll do is going to follow fairly closely what's, what's in the book. Um, the second semester, there's quite a, a lot which I'd like to add or change about what's in, in the book. Okay, so that's that's the general idea. Now, the um, so 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 what I'm going to do today is is mostly uh, so it is pretty much what corresponds to what's in this book as chapter one. This is going to be a very very fast, very sketchy overview of kind of of the main kind of um, so, so some of the main ideas of, of the class and kind of the main orientation for the main point of view. So especially if you've seen some quantum, quantum mechanics before, I think this may be helpful in kind of explaining what um, the angle I'm trying to take on it. If you haven't, if you haven't seen it, any of this before, I think what's going to probably happen is you're going to find a lot of some of what I'm going to say today um, very confusing. So in, in, in general, I would say that for this class, you uh, you know, yeah, I'm I'm trying to actually do things concretely and slowly and, and clearly enough that 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 you should you should be able to follow it, and you really should stop me if you're not following it. That's a little bit different today. That this is an overview, so some things are going to go by very quickly and go by, and I'm going to tell you about some very high level ideas without really explaining them. And I I I think for, for mo most people are probably going to find that more baffling than a, a bit baffling than, than but the idea is that as we start to go through the um the, the detail the details and various examples of this over the next few weeks um then that the uh, the picture that i'm trying to draw today should, should start to become a bit clearer okay so that's the idea of today um but let me so let me so, so i want to start out by by asking kind of you know what is you know what's what's the kind of Math, what's the basic mathematical structure of quantum mechanics? 
And so the maybe before before getting started, um, it, it, the, the the thing that's that's un, unclear. It, actually, maybe I won't, I won't even I won't even. Well, let me let me start that for, first with with kind of classical mechanics. So, so classical mechanics is a, is a large subject, and and I won't um, and we'll also be going over some of this as as a course goes on. But in 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 very rough terms, one of the one way of thinking about quantum mechanics, classical mechanics, is that it says that one that the, the state of the world um, of a system is a point. In, 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 in what we'll call in what we'll call phase space, and so 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 phase space is um, if you've if you've seen um, taking a class in mechanics, this is a thing that's labeled by coordinates at coordinates momenta. But what what this is real what this is really is that this is the um, so 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 phase space. So, but what, way to think about it, and this will be. This is a way that people don't always think, don't always explain in mechanics class, but it'll be useful for me as we go along. That phase space is really the, um, the space of solutions. Of, of, of su su some equation of motion. So maybe there are a lot of ways of thinking about phase space, but it may be a, it's just a good idea to think about it as a, a space of a space of solutions of, of an equation of motion. And, um, then, and, and, and really, and, and, and so if, if, you, if you want to know um, what's the state of the world, you just really want to know what, which solution are you at. So what's the, the state of the world is the solution to the equations of motion for the world, for, for, for your, your system, and that's, that, 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 that's, that's where you are. And if you know where you are at, at some particular time in this phase space, then the, the equations of motion tell you evolve you through the space space and you, well that, that you evolve and you, and you, you know what's going to happen but the if you want to know what the state of the world you just have to think of it as a point in, the, in, in, in some space and that space you can think of as a solution these the space of solutions of the equations of motion so that's one way of thinking about classical mechanics and then the second the, the, the second thing to do is, is you can ask okay how do I kind of kind of characterize this? Um, so how do I, you know, kind of go out and measure things and figure figure out where I am? Well, you you you, you go out and what you do is you, you measure some kind of function which tells you where you are on phase space, and so and that's your so-called observables. Moles well, are functions on phase. Okay. Um, so, 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 so this is really the setup of, and really in, in, in classical mechanics. You've got, you've got phase space, you've got this, it corresponds to these equations of motion, and you've got your observables are, are, are just functions on it, and they're, they're just functions of, of what point you are, and by, by, look, by measuring these functions, you figure, you figure out where you are, what, what your what you're solution is. Okay, so that's classical mechanics. Now, the, so, so, so quantum mechanics, the, the, the strange thing about it is, is that the, the whole mathematical structure is kind of is kind of completely different. You don't actually have have anything like this. So let me start. Let's look at. So here you've got so quantum mechanics. Let me. Uh, and um, okay, and, and, and well, I probably should. should uh, let, let me start. With so, so the first thing is that states. So, so states. So states are completely are something completely different. This is, so again, a state is going to be something that characterizes um, your system completely at a given time, and you've got then some kind of rule of dynamics, which is going to tell you once you know what it is at a given time, you've got an equation which is going to tell you what 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 it, what it does for all later times. So, but but the, but the thing that characterizes the state at a, at a at a given time is a a, a vector. I don't want to write this. Um, uh, our 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 vectors 
in a complex vector space is with the permission inner plot. So this is so you say what what all these words mean. So the so so, so, so the, the, the first so it, I, it, it's not too surprising to decide. Okay, we're going to characterize states by a vector space. But but the the, the strange thing that's one one of the first strange things about quantum mechanics is is that it's complex. Um, these are complex vector spaces. So you're characterizing the functions. Are, so so the state is getting characterized by these these complex ve vectors. This complex vector space, and and basically everything that we do in quantum mechanics is going to crucially involve the fact that this is a complex vector space. That you can take complex linear combinations of vectors, and uh, so this is and there there's there's really this this is very unlike classical mechanics. Classical mechanics you can do without ever talking about complex numbers. Quantum mechanics. You absolutely have to. I mean, well, you, you can always avoid complex numbers by kind of doubling your number of degrees of freedom, but you're, you're going to get something very, very awkward if you don't work with complex numbers. Okay, and then a her Hermitian inner product again just says that th this is the the analog of if you have a, a real vector space, you have a standard kind of inner product that tells you when vectors are orthogonal or what the tells you the products of their lengths times the cosine of the angle between them. In um, in a complex vector space, there there's there's an analog um, of, the, of the real inner product. When it, the her Hermitian, anyway, if you, it, we'll, we'll we'll say this later on. That just this just tells you that if you conjugate on one side, you you conjugate the value of the inner product. If you conjugate the other side, you don't. But we'll we'll talk about that later. Um, and and so, and so 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 these things are what you'll often. Um, and, and, and this, this 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 thing I'll, I'll often write as a with with, with a, an, an H with a um, kind of a calligraphic calligraphic H, and then this is going to be and then the uh, a, a, a state we'll set, we'll often use this notation this due to Dirac where you take a, you write down you, 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 you write down this kind of symbol. And whenever I write down this kind of symbol, it means that I'm just, I'm just, I've decided to write down a, 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 a I'm referring to a state in the, the vector space, in the, in the state, in the state space. Okay. Um, now, now the, the the next the next thing is about observables. So, so let me let me I, I mean, let me try to be a, talk about these call these quantum observables. But, but the point is that when I'm talking about quantum mechanics, I'm talking when I, and I say observable, I mean something completely very, very different than what I meant when I was doing classical mechanics. And, the, and I'll, sometimes I'll call, I'll say put quantum in front of the observable, but as long as I'm, if, you, if I don't, otherwise sometimes I'll just call the, these observables. And, and, and this is in some sense, I think, maybe this certainly bothered me at the beginning when I was taking quantum mechanics, but what, what, what are these things? These are, these are self-adjoint operators. So in, in, instead of being functions on a phase space, these things are actually, are, are, are actually, um, oh, um, these are linear, so I guess I should say they're linear. So, 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 so these are actually, um, th th these are things that act on states by some kind of by some kind of linear transformations, and so so they're, they're these are these are very very different than than, than functions on in any kind of space. In particular, they don't. Um, one thing is is they don't necessarily commute, so don't. Mute. So it, w w one thing about um, classical mechanics is your observables are just, just just two functions, and if you multiply two functions, it doesn't matter which which order you multiply them in, and and it also doesn't. But but here, these these operators are very different gadgets, and they the fact that they don't commute is going to be very very important. Okay, and then I won't I won't maybe let me see if you haven't seen. Um, 
if you haven't seen self adjoint before, don't worry about this for now. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll go back and do some some linear algebra and do that later. Okay. So 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 this is looks completely different than the um, what's happening in classical mechanics. Maybe I should I should then say maybe one more piece piece of structure. I could have also said that in my classical mechanics is that there's a In, if you study the um, if you study classical mechanics in the Hamil if you've ever studied it, so-called the Hamiltonian version of classical mechanics, you find that um, you can understand dynamics. You can understand how th thing if if you know what something is doing at a time t, what it's going to do at, at later times t, at, at later times, just by um, by, by, by solving so-called Hamilton's equations, and for for a motion in phase space. And Hamilton's equations all just depend upon a single observable, which is a distinguished observable in classical mechanics, the Hamiltonian. Well, here in um, in, in, in quantum mechanics, you have something similar. You have a distinguished um, a quantum observable. Well, and what? Well, and, and again, so it's going to be an, the, an, an operator, a linear operator. They call it the they call it the Hamiltonian operator. And, here, H. Okay. and yeah, so so this is a a, a standard uh, standard notation for this is a uh, just a, 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 a standard capital H. Okay, and, and and so all I'm saying at this point is that is that you know among the many many possible self-adjoint operators that correspond to different kinds of quantum observables, well, there's going to be one distinguished one, this guy, and and what 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 he what he does the one of the role he plays is roles he plays is he tells you how things evolve in time. He tells you about dynamics, and then and then so if you want to know what the um, if you know the state vector at a given time and you want to know what it's going to do later. You just you, you you find this operator and then you write down i h bar and say more about this in a minute and then then the the derivative so i um, is equal to h so, okay. so what so so what this guy tells you is if, is that if if you if it, it, if you apply him to a state, he tells you he's basically the differentiation operator. He's, he tells you, you know, infinitesimally how the, how the state's going to evolve in time, and um, and and this this and this is this is this is kind of the abstract version of what's called Schrodinger's equation. And, and so, if if you if you have a specific realization of what your states look like, and you have a specific realization of this operator, you're going to have something much more concrete. Maybe some kind of uh, partial differential equation, which is going to this is going to become something much more concrete. And when people talk about Schrodinger's equation, they often mean a much more concrete um, concrete version of it. But 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 this this is the abstract version of it. So the distinguished here means the edge satisfies the equation, right? Excuse me. What was the first so, thing you said? So what you mean by distinguished is that H satisfies such equation, so it is uh, distinguished, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, oh. it, it, it just that it plays a special role. Yeah. So so you've got lots of observables, and they're going to do interesting things, but but there's going to be one operator which has this, which does this. Yeah. But is this equation given by experiments? Um, you 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 can choose it. I mean, so so I mean, this, so so far. Or, Everything so uh, everything I'm talking about is just mathematics. So so far mm -hmm. we're writing down a mathematical model of the world, but but we're saying that uh, you know, it, and we're going to describe the world by states, and and, and we, we have to we uh, by by these vectors, and and we have to we have to know how is the what you know if we know the vector at a given time, how are we going to find it later time? And this is kind of the simplest possible equation. You know, in, in some sense, in quantum mechanics, the whole notion of, of Time evolution is kind of simpler. I mean, this is actually simpler than Hamiltonian mechanics. This is kind of the simplest possible thing. You want to know 
how is something going to change? Well, the infinitesimal change is just given by an operator right here. But it, but it, it's right. We don't know what this is. So 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 this is going to be yeah yeah. So so different. So a whole art of physics is going to be to kind of find you know just to study different Hamiltonians and to study different choices of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Professor. Yeah. Um. I'm sorry, I know this is a naive question. No, good, 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 yeah, yeah. We need more naive questions, good. <laughs> but, um, I, and I understand we're working with, it's, you know, non-abelian, uh, like vectors and things, but why do we have to write Schrodinger's equation this way rather than just saying, like, h equals i h bar dbt? I understand, you know, like... Well, it, 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 it's a, um, I mean, it, it, this, it, so, so... Well, I mean, if if you want, you can think. I mean, you can think of at some kind of very very abstract conceptual level, the Hamiltonian is just differentiation with this funny. You you you, you you've done this, and, and, and then and I was going to say that, and, and this this is just a um, this is just Planck's concept. This is just a concept that depends on your choice of units. So maybe to, just to say that. So 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 this I'm actually going to most of the time just check, use units where h bar is one. So so this you can is just something about units. There's something funny going on with the I here, and I'll, I'll, this I'll say more about here, that, that the I just changes, you know, you'd like to just say that something really stupid, that the Hamiltonian is just the differentiation, it's just, it's just the infinitesimal time change. It's, it's the operator that tells you how the, the infinitesimal time change. But in order, in, in, in order to get something self-adjoint, it turns out, you, you have to, and I'll explain this more later, you have to put in a factor of I. So the I just changes. We we could we could have just said we could have also made this equation, put the I over here, and talked about minus I H instead of H. But but you're right. So in some abstract sense, H is just the the time differentiation operator. But but you have to. The, the point is, if you're actually going to write down a model and do something with this, you you you, you need you need a specific realization of what your of what your states are, and you need a specific realization of what H is going to be. Right. Okay. okay. So Thank this you. is at an abstract level where, yeah, you, 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 I mean, you're, you're, you aren't actually getting very much. If you actually want to do anything with this, you, you have to explicitly choose choose this vector space and explicitly choose this operator. Okay. Oh, okay. professor. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the imaginary the imaginary number on the left hand side. Is that I here just to make sure that the the operator on the left hand side is self adjoint? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, you, you, you could, it's perfectly possible to write down. I could have made the, um, I, 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 I could have made my initial, um, uh, kind of postulates of quantum mechanics that, that, you know, that these observables are, are I times self adjoint operators. Or we'll, we'll, we'll see this in the examples. You'll, you'll see where, where the I comes from. But, but maybe just the thing to say, and I'll, I'll say a bit more later if I as I get to this that the um, the, the the natural kind of, of quantum observables that we're going to get from symmetries are going to come from being unit infin infinitesimal unitary transformations. So those are always going to have an I with them, and so you have to if if you want to um, any, anyway. So there's always there's always going to be an I floating around, and you can put it either. You, you could think of it over here. You could think of it here. This, the standard thing to do is to put it here, and then and that and that's going to make this self-adjoint, and this have and this this self-adjoint. That's this just so it's a convention, but that's that's how it works. But it, it's crucial if you want this to be self-adjoint that the i goes here. If you if you just did this, then the operator here would be an operator that we call skew adjoint. That when you um, when you took the adjoint, you would pick up a minus sign. But we'll see that we'll see more of that later. Any other questions? Uh, a little question about your notation, the convention of your notation. So, it, uh, is the first first slot in your inner product linear or anti-linear? Um, I, 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 I'm going to use the physicists. I haven't. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, 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 I be careful not to write that down. But the. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to use the physicist con convention that the inner product is anti-linear on the left. Anti-linear on the left. And it, it's on it's the, the same right. convention that yeah, actually. Let, let me say more about that when we get to it. But there, there's a when you define Hermitian inner product, there's a choice of convention which way mm -hmm. you do it. And and physicists always do it one way. Mathematicians, half of them do it one way, half of them do it the other way. 
So I'm, I'm going to follow the physicists and, and, and half the mathematicians. Oh, I see. Thanks. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. So, but you, you should general, in, in general, in this course, you should assume that when there's an issue of conventions, I'm really going to, as much as possible, try to follow the conventions that physicists use. You know, in, in, unless there's something so problematic about it, they do so much damage to the mathematical structure that I can't stand it. I'm going to do that because I, I, I do, I, I do want to speak a language. I'm trying to speak a language which is going to make sense to both mathematicians and physicists. So I, I'm not going to get away from physicist language without without a good reason. Okay. Thank okay. you. Anything else? Yeah. Um, and is it possible to do like the left hand side of the Schrodinger equation? It almost looks like half of like a connection. Like. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, that, that's a. Anyway, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you're you're asking for something much 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 more much more sophisticated than than, than where we want to go. But but yeah, but but, but th this is such a simple structure that it's really um, yeah, and this appears everywhere. Everywhere you can you'll see this everywhere in mathematics. This is kind of the world's simplest differential equation, and it's whenever you do anything in mathematics or geometry, you're gonna you're gonna see equations like this. So yeah, but yeah, well, so and it, you do see these things in geometry, the connections, but that what we're, we're I think it, one, one thing to say right now is, is, is you actually shouldn't be thinking geometrically. I'm not doing any geometry now. This is really more kind of algebra. This is really this is a this is a this is just a vector space. This is just a linear operator, and this is but and this is just telling you how the vector moves in your vector space and time. There's there's no no geometry. So at, at various points in this class, we're going to um, I'll be talking about some geometry that, that, that that's needed, but I'm going to be you know, the, the, and, and there's some very subtle and deep relationships between geometry and, and, and quantum mechanics. But the, the, a lot of these basic structures of quantum mechanics, they're not really geometric. And, and if you want, this is the, this is why quantum gravity is hard, because nobody knows how to integrate, how to get together this kind of more algebraic point of view and the, and, and the pure geometric point of view. But, but And if you teach a class like this, you really have to decide you know, am I going to go down a geometric route or a non-geometric? And, and we're mostly going to be staying away from geometry. Okay. So that's just a, yeah, so if you're, yeah, so unfortunately, I mean, there'll be points where the geometry is important and I'll explain it, but um, if you try and kind of give a geometric interpretation to a lot of these things, you're going to, you're just going to get into a confusing and dead subject. Okay. Oh, and another question, is H here static as time flow? Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. Is H here a static, uh, a static observable as time flows? I'm sorry. I, so you're saying something about static? So, so is H here depending on the time t? So, so, so oh, H should depend on t. Yeah. In, in, in principle, H can depend depend on t. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, so H can also H can also be a. a Actually, the the the, 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 the cases that we're interested, the simplest cases that we're interested in, H will be time independent. But you can you 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 can also you can also look at cases where where this depends on time. Yeah. But 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 for the simplest cases that I'm I'm interested in, it's let's first start by thinking about this as time. Time independent because it, it, mm -hmm. it's um, if you allow this to be time dependent, then you 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 lose a lot of the you you lose a lot of the nice structure that you have when it's time independent. Okay. Okay. So let me get get going. Go ahead, move a little farther with this. Um, Okay. Okay. So, so now, so, 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 so this is it. This is really the basic mathematical structure, and, and what we're going to be doing is trying is, is looking at, you know, try, trying to trying, trying to look at realizations of, 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 the, of this picture where you have which are kind of give you fundamental um, things in physics. And what I was going to do. Let me take. So the, okay. Now, now this I think. Okay. So, so let me just say a, a few quick words about. Kind of the, you know, how how, do, how does this connect to the real world? So let me let me just say a few quick words. I think what I want to do with this is just I'm going to say something very quick now. It's a really it's a really different a di different and complicated subject. There's a lot to say about it, and, and and I think I may actually write some more to add to the book about it, and maybe I'll say a bit more in a later lecture about this. But let me just say something quick about how do you relate this to the world? I mean, because you don't. I mean, if you go out and look at the world, you don't see complex. 
You don't see vectors at a compact vector space. Okay, so let me say this is what's called um, so this is the connection to, to the real world. To re real should be in quotes, but real world. Um, let me. I, I, I think I think to to me the best way to think about this whole problem is that. It is to say that what we have is we have this very, very beautiful, simple mathematical structure of what these quantum theories look like. But then, and, and, and these mathematical structures work very, very nicely at describing very simple systems. But if you go out and do it and, and look at the real world, you find you know, you're, you're not looking at a single particle or a single system. You're looking at a very, very kind of complex um, you know, thing with 10 to the 23 or whatever number of, of, of degrees of freedom all around you. And, and so you're looking at some very, very complicated thing. And if you actually want to apply this theory to some actual real, real world experiment you've done, measurement you've done, you've got a huge problem that you can't, even if you could write down a model which, which, gave, which told you how, how all the degrees of freedom in the world around you worked and how your apparatus worked and, and tried just to solve some short degree equation in 10 to the 26 degrees of freedom, you wouldn't get very far doing that. So you, you, you need to somehow connect all the, connect these things to more to, to more kind of classical physics and classical measurements. And so what I so so I, I, I what, so there's some extra some some extra postulates which 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 you make or some extra let me call these principles. So let me let me write down. There's two two principles for how to deal with this. Principle one. And the first, so, so, so your, your first principle is, is you, you need to figure out what's the relationship between your quantum observables and your classical observables. You know, what is, what, what is a quantum, how do you, what is a quantum observable telling you? It's a measurable. And, and, and the, um, the, the principle is this, is that, um, principle one is that uh, the, let's say, say sorry, all this, 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 this states, Let's just say this. So if a state phi is an eigen is is is, a, is, a, is an eigenvector for an observable, and that, that now we mean quantum observables. Oh, oh, um, with uh, eigenvalue you know, lambda. So, so what, what I mean by this is just exactly that if you apply O to the, the vector, you get back the vector. So, so normally this takes this takes you to some completely different vector, but there are certain special vectors where you're going to just get the get this, and and, and we're going to be and, and and if this is a Hermitian operator, then this is going to have real eigenvalues. So lambda is real. Okay. Then, and the state, you know, it, 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 the state has classic, you know, co corresponds to classical, to 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 a, to, to a classical. So, so, so what this is, what this principle is saying is, is it's saying, you know, these observables that we're that we're interested in are going to have some interesting relation to, 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 to classical observables, but the the relation is going to be is, is peculiar that you can't if you wanted to know if you've got a state with a certain um, if, if you write down an arbitrary state, it, it really has no relation to. Um, you, you, you can't say that, that this is, and maybe it's better if I pick an example. Let me, let me pick an, an example. Example, so O is, is, is the momentum. Well, anyway, momentum in, in, some, in some direction. So the, in, in quantum mechanics, this, the momentum is going to be an operator. Okay, and most, most states of the world just don't you know they, they're not eigen they're not eigenvectors for, for this operator and they don't have um so so, so they're, they're really they 
they, they don't have actual classical momentum. You can't say this state of the world has classical momentum this. It, it just doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's, it's just not true. But, but there are special states which, which, which are the eigenvectors for this, for, for this um, operator. And then the eigenvalue of, of, of that state of this operator is going to actually be the classical, is, is going to be the classical momentum you assign to that. Okay. So, 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 so this is just kind of, there, there's no, anyway, this, I, I, I think, I, th I think it might, it might be good to say that, that there, there, there's really, there, there's really no good reason to believe this. I mean, this is, this, this, this is just a, uh, kind of a, an observed fact about how this formalism ma maps onto the world. So, there, and it's very controversial about what you want to do with this. But, but anyway, let, that's the first principle. And the second principle, to, is is this? It's that um, if okay, so if, if you take a, if you take a state, um, okay, let's just say say it this way. So, so if Let's let's take say the op the operator. Let's say we, we have two states. Oh, sorry. Okay, so so let's say that we have two states with two different momenta. Okay, the, we have two different states which which are special eigenvectors, and they've got and they actually you actually can assign them to a um. You, you can assign a a a. a, a a classical observ a classical value of the an observable to them. Then what what happens if you t if you take a linear combination of these things? So then if 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 you if you write you, t you take some linear combination of these states, okay, and then C so, so C C one C two are just complex numbers. So, you, so, so this is the kind of problem of quantum mechanics. You know, even if you think you've got these states that look like what you're used to classically, these things have a certain kind of nice classical observable. Then you, quantum mechanics says this is, this is a linear, the state space is a linear vector space. You can take linear combinations to get another state. So if you do that and do this, then you're, th this guy is going to be a very funny guy. This, this guy is, in general, he's not going to be an eigenvector. You know, unless these eigenvalues are the same, he's not going to be an eigenvector for that for that operator. So normally you would say, well, okay, well this this I, I don't know anything about this guy's momentum. But 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 the um, the principle is that what happens, and this is called called Born's rule. And it, and, and it says that you see. Um, so you, so you so you so you you, you see, um, so if you measure this, maybe I, I'm going to have to go back and rewrite this up here. So so let me let me go back and start with this up here. Uh, so Born's rule. If you if you measure if you if you measure. The classical value value, you know, corresponding to your quantum observable O to, to O, you'll see and then there's 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 two positives so one. So, so sometimes you'll see sometimes you'll see lambda one. And then, but and, and sometimes you'll see lambda two. So the only things you're going to see are lambda one or lambda two. If you've taken this linear combination of things, which have lambda one and lambda two, and you, then you're, you're always going to, if you if you measure the corresponding thing, you're going to see lambda one or lambda two. But but you're not going. But but you're going to see that this is only going to be kind of probabilistic. You're going to see lambda one with probability. If you take the um, you take the norm squared of this guy, and then you have to to normalize it properly. You have to do this, or I or I could I could work with with states of norm with norm one where this is always one, and then it would just be that, and then the um,
Okay. So, 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 so there's something kind of funny, there's a lot of funny things about this. One, one funny thing about this is, is that notice that if you take, um, you know, that, 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 that this thing is actually, this thing is actually quadratic in the, you know, in, in, in the length of this guy. When, you, when, when you're multiplying this the wave function by a number, um, you're not increasing the, you're not increasing the probability of the, the probability um, proportional to that number, it's proportional to the square. So that, so there's a very, there's a very funny, funny kind of dependence upon, upon these coefficients. And, um, and, there, there, and, there, and there's also the, the thing which I think bothers people intensely about quantum mechanics, which is the subject of a lot of debate, is this question of why, you know, why probability? You, know, you, you, you had this nice Schrodinger equation, it's a nice deterministic equation. Um, why all of a sudden are you talking about, you know, only being able to understand what's going to happen with certain, probabilistically, with the probability of something happening? Okay, okay so I think, let, let me... That, this is kind of all I want to say now, and, and this is just kind of the, then the beginning of a, then there's a long series of arguments about what these, these, these two principles, what these two principles mean. And um, so what, one thing that you'll see sometimes is that sometimes you'll see Born's rule, um, the Born rule put in, put in a, as an axiom of the theory. Okay? And that's actually kind of a traditional way of thinking of it is that, the, that this is kind of one of the axioms of the theory. But I, I, th I think it's better... And it's certainly better from the mathematical structure is just to, to think about we've got this, this this kind of simple mathematical structure and that's what we're going to talk about and then the question of what's going to actually happen if you go out into the real world with all its messiness and its huge number of degrees of freedom and start trying to do an experiment and start trying to figure out what this has to do with classical mechanics then you get you know the, the very complicated things are going to happen you know, can be kind of characterized by 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 these by these by these principles, but um, I so but I, I'm not going to get into like the question of where. For 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 me, this 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 fact is going to be it's an important fact if you want to connect anything I, I tell you, to what's what you're going to see in an experiment or, or to physics, but it, it's not something, that the mathematics is, it actually can tell you about why, why this happens. I think that, that this is a this is a. A whole, 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 di whole different game. Okay. Anyway, so, this, so, this, but, but, so that's pretty much it about the physics. So, then any, any, um, uh, okay. And any, any questions about this? So now I'll go. On, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll then gonna go back to mathematics. But, but any questions about this? Okay. And, and, and I and I may I may say so. Once we have a little bit more um, the detail details worked out, I, I may come back to this to the to this question again about what um. About the different kinds of arguments people have over measure over measurement theory and over the over the significance of this. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, yeah. just a quick question. Uh, in the very beginning, you mentioned that all the operators in quantum mechanics are linear. How important is their li linearity? Like, if they were to be nonlinear, things would be completely different or completely different. Yeah. So, yeah, l linearity. Is, it is really absolutely crucial. So the, the Schrodinger equation is a linear equation. Yeah. So so people have tried to. I mean, you, you could. Yeah. So so this equation, you know, this equation was linear in psi. If I if I, I could have put in like um, I could have put in a, a psi squared term or, or something that depends upon psi squared term. The minute you do that, really all hell breaks loose. I mean, th th there are many many attempts people have tried to, over the years to try to. Um, to talk about nonlinear versions of quantum mechanics or to introduce nonlinearity. One of the reasons people like to think about nonlinearity is, is exactly this, that you, that you say, well, this linear thing is just an approximation. There's really this nonlinear thing going on, and the nonlinear thing would tell you why, why once you understood the linear thing, you could actually see what's going, what's going to happen here. But I think all I can say is that one, the, the, the mathematical structures that we're talking about all crucially depend upon linearity, and the whole history of the subject that I know is that any attempt to kind of, you know, to introduce a, a, a fundamental nonlinearity into the theory kind of you know, runs up against kind of horrible physical problems as well as mathematical problems very quickly. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So let's go on to. Let's, 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 okay. So now is let me just try to then quick, quickly talk about about the math we're going to be doing. So now we're going to get a lot closer to what I want to actually. 
So let's see if we can. So, so this is this, and, and again, this is where I guess the the warning applies that, that I'm going to be telling you about a lot of sophisticated math for the next few minutes, very very quickly as an, as a kind of an overview of what we're doing. So, if, but if you find if, the, if if this looks kind of hard to follow, that's 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 normal. You can expect that. But but maybe just to start out with what I'm trying to do is is to ask the question about. So, 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 so the, the way physics is normally normally formulated, there's there's no, you know, there, there are lots and lots of permission linear operators on 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 these state spaces, and and there's there's no, and there's no obvious reason why, you know, why some one should be more interesting than the other. But it but it turns out if you actually look at pick up any quantum mechanics book, you'll find that most of the time is spent studying certain certain very very specific operators. And these specific operators, one of them is the Hamiltonian operator, which is going to tell you how you're evolving in time. But then there's some others. So, so, so the um, so the, the observable okay. So, so I'll, I'll start kind of writing down a list of the standard kind of obser observables, the standard operators that you see in a, te in a, in a textbook, and maybe write them down here. So here, so the first one is H, the Hamiltonian. And, and we know that then, the, then another one of the first other ones you see is is is, is a vector one. one 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 component for each component space so so kind of a, a vector a, a kind of a triplet of operators a vector valued um, op operators which are a momentum so this is the uh, momentum and the the other thing you see is uh, something a physicist operate with a J it's another vector valued thing. Which is called the angular momentum, and then then there's another one which is just just a, a single operator, which is often called Q, which is going to have the the charge. Okay, and okay, and and, and so it, now now it turns out that the okay okay so 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 so, so, so this guy we know. We know that he has a significance that he's the thing which kind of generates infinitesimal translations in time. He's the one thing that moves you in time. So this is okay, the infinite, this is the infinitesimal version of time translation. Now momentum turns out to be to, to, to behave very much like the Hamiltonian, except it's telling you what happens if you. It's telling you much something much simpler than what the dynamics is how you move in time. It's telling you just what happens if you move back and forth in space, and so this corresponds to the three directions correspond to the um, to a space translation. Okay. Now, now this guy so angular momentum um, again. So so this. This, it turns out, corresponds to the fact that if you have a, a thing in three-dimensional space, you can imagine rotating it. And you can imagine asking, you know, what happens if I do an infinitesimal rotation? And this, so this is going to be spatial rotation. Okay, now, another thing you could do if you have, if you have a complex vector space is you can imagine just you can imagine doing a transformation on all your vectors just by changing by a by a phase, and so this is going to be a phase. In other words, just uh, so so phase um, translation, or or, or 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 if you like, it's you're you're, you're multiplying multiplication by you know, e, to, e to the i theta. Okay, so you're just taking your complex. You, you copy the vectors and you're multiplying them by this e, by e to the i theta, and okay. Now, so it, it turns out e, each of these these guys corresponds to a a group. They're, 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 well, let me say that in the middle, but but there, there's kind of the time translation. Of the, the full if you do all the time translations, you're going to get a, a real number line of time translations. If you do space translations, you're going to have three copies of it. I'll say a, we'll say a lot more about this in the class as time goes on, but but the um, all of the spatial rotation ro rotating things in three dimensional space is that there's a, a group 
formed by such transformation, which is called SO3. If, if you multiply things by phases, there's also a, a group, of, this also forms a group which we'll call U1. And, um, and, and, and maybe let me just, just add one more to this, which is X vector, which is the position. If you want to actually measure the, another the important observable is, is what's the position of something. Well, it's got, again, got three values. And, th and this is, it, it is kind of subtle that, that this, this actually depends. If you, if, you, if you Fourier transform, if you take the Fourier transform from Q variables to P variables, anyway, if you, if you know about the Fourier transform, if you, if you Fourier transform, this is the translation in, 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 the, in the Fourier transform space. And I'll say, I'll say a lot more about this. And it's, all, it's also going to be an R3. Okay, so, so, so this, should make you this should make you suspicious that, wait a minute, if I, you know, all of these observables these people are talking about in my quantum mechanics book, they all, they all have a simple interpretation as the, the operator which is generating an, an, some kind of infinitesimal symmetry transformation of the theory, either moving in time, moving in space, rotating in space, just translating by a, by a phase, or, um, or, 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 or translating in, 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 in the Fourier transform variable. So these, so, 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 so this, if you've, if you've seen this, and it's made, it makes you suspicious as it did me, that wait a minute, this is something deep is going on here. The, what, what, I, what, I, what I'm going to try to do is take, take the point of view that, that this is really what's fundamental, that you don't, you don't want to worry about arbitrary observables. Arbitrary observables are not interesting. What's interesting are the observables which correspond to infinitesimal um, symmetry transformations of various kinds. Those, those are the things that you really care about. And that quantum mechanics, in, in, in some sense, is a subject which is kind of at its core, kind of built upon sym symmetry principles and upon the behavior of um, and, and with, with all of the inter all of the interesting operators, you, you're going to see corresponding to, um, to, to to symmetry transformations. So, so 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 this table is kind of the main kind of inspiration for a lot of what we're the mathematics we're going to try to do. So what what we're going to do then is is is, is then ask you know what, what what what's the mathematical context for for for, for studying these things for studying how does a um, you, you, you've got a group, you've got the, one of these groups, and, you, and you're interested in what structure, you know, t t tells you about these, these groups acting on, on a complex vector space infinitesimately with, the, with, with these operators. And so may, maybe the thing to do here is to, let me just stop it. So, okay, so let me kind of tell you the, the bottom line, and then we'll get to uh, say a bit more about it. So... So this implies, implies that, that you should think of the observed that, that mathematically the observables correspond to uh, the to a, a, a Lie algebra. Uh, let, me, let me say, let me do it, take this to a, a unitary. On H of, uh, of some symmetry group. Okay, so 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 in, in some sense, a large part of the goal of this class will be to explain to you what, what this what this statement means, and the, and you shouldn't you know so what is a representation? What is a Lie algebra? What does it mean to be unitary? What are these symmetry groups? And then but 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 you should you know as I tell you about this kind of abstract theory, you should keep in mind that about the, these examples that I just wrote down earlier. The, the examples I wrote down earlier, I told you the symmetry group, and I told and I, and I told you. 
about what the operators were. So all you really need to, under, to try to understand is, is what does it mean for those operators, which I saw earlier to, to correspond to to, 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 to be the operators corresponding to a unitary the algebra representation acting on, on that space. So this is, the, this is the whole abstract nonsense. And one of the main reasons for teaching this class is that this is, this is a, a really fundamental notate. Um, a fundament, it turns out to be a really kind of fundamental um, uh, sub subject in, in mathematics. I mean, th these kinds of mathematical structures appear throughout mathematics. They appear in number theory. They appear everywhere. And um, we, we, we normally don't teach, teach them in an under, undergraduate class, because the general theory of what can happen in general with these things is a very complicated, beautiful subject, and so we typically teach that this a lot of this in a first year graduate class. But what I wanted to do is to is to kind of, you know, not not teach the general theory of these of these things, but to kind of inter introduce people to 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 this whole subject through through these special examples and motivated by by the idea that this is kind of a, a fundamental way of thinking about quantum mechanics. So that's that's the goal. So let me just spend the, the last few minutes trying trying to at least say say a bit about what these what these words mean. At least get get started thinking about it. And then what's going to happen? And then what's going to happen starting next class is we're going to start building up examples, starting with the simplest example. So the first the example we'll start with next on Thursday will will be this U one example of phase transformations. But let me just kind of say a bit for more about what this means. Okay, so let's go. So, so first, for, for, first general structure is, is there is you know about groups. And I'm hoping p people have heard something about what what a group is, but a group is basically a set set with with, with a, a multiplication. I I'll, I'll may not try to say more about this, but and if you, and this is what I mean by saying that you really got to think algebraically. That if you want to think very abstractly about what a group is, it's just a um, you know, it, it's it, it's something with a it's a bunch of elements, and if you got two of them, you can multiply them and, and get a third. And it, it obeys an associative law. It's not necessarily commutative. It, it may depend which which order you do it. Okay, but now then there's a uh, but now th this this set. So so so, so th there's there's a lot of examples that are called finite. If you take a finite set and put a multiplication on it, there you you get you get what are called finite groups. And we do teach a course here in the. Um, and the, the undergraduate curriculum, which is a whole course, which is about the the unitary the unitary representations of these finite groups, and it's a beautiful subject. It's a complicated subject. It, 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 it and it actually has some implications for you can apply it to quantum mechanics. I'm mostly going to be staying away from that subject because I want to get you know I I, I, I want to emphasize some something else. But but in some sense. If you start with just a finite group, a, fi a set, a finite set, and put a multiplication on it, you can you can ask about these about representations, and you and you can you can do the whole representation theory, and it's in some ways it's simpler, but it doesn't have the problem is really that you're not going to have this notion of what it means to be an infinitesimal transformation. If you just have a set, you don't have neighboring points in the set, you don't know what to do. So let me um. I guess, but maybe I should say, maybe I should say what um. Let me let me maybe, maybe here here I'll say so so a finite group, so, so let me well maybe just say here so representation. Well, let me just do say so let's let's do a group action. So okay so maybe the. The, the, the really important thing to say to orient you towards this is that people often talk about, about groups and tell you all about groups and that these are fundamental things and they're whatever. But it turns out that what's actually interesting about groups typically is not the group themselves, the groups themselves, but what they act on. You know, what, is that you can use groups to, to, to act on something. And, and, and what this means is that these act on, so group G, a set G, so G, acts on a space, a set or a space X by, 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 by X element of X goes to G, dot, call it dot X, where so G is an element of G, and, you, and, and, and it's a group action if G1, yeah, anyway, yeah, if, if you do this, 
if you do this this way, and then you're acting on here, it's going to be the same thing as G1, G2 acting on X. Anyway, so, 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 so this is just the, this is just a way of saying, that, of, of incorporating what it, what it means for a group of symmetries, you can think of it as the symmetries of something, to, 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 act, to act on the thing. And what it means is for each thing in your group, if you feed it a, um, feed it some, a point in the space it's acting on, you, it, it takes you to another point. So you can think of G as being like, you know, rotation by some angle. Well, you start th th this, any, any three-dimensional object you feed it, it it's going to act on it and give you the same thing rotated by that angle. Okay. But, but, and, and so uh, a, a represent, but, but the, the problem with, with, with this theory is that if, if you just act on spaces, spa spaces don't, you know, a general space, there's really not much you can say about it. It's just a bunch of objects. So you, you, you want to kind of to, to, to have more structure to work with. So this is what a representation is. Um, G, so G, G acts on a linear, on a vector space. So, so if you, if you're going to, um, so, so, so you think you, the way to think about this is you know, groups are these nice, this, this nice abstract objects which can, which are maybe symmetries of something. Group action, it, group actions is a whole story of you know what oh, what does it mean for a group to be a symmetry of something? How does it? How are groups acting on things? But, but these groups can can act on kind of arbitrary, complicated things which. They don't do do much except get get turned in, into another similar thing. Whereas if you take take a um, if you if you act on vector spaces, then you get what's, what's called a representation. And so the um, oh, and, and what you have to say what you have to say is that when you act on a vector space, you you act by linear transformations. So you want to preserve the whole linear structure. And so, so in other words, here you say so. So that so G acts on a on, on a vector by, by 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 some linear transformation acting on, on that vector, and, and so we'll call it pi of G V. Okay. So pi of G. So so pi of G is a linear operator. So, so anyway, so again, sorry, this is a lot of very abstract, highly abstract stuff going, going, by, going by fast, but, but this is what we're going to, this is what, we're, when somebody tells you that, that you're, they're talking about a representation and the, and the theory of representations, this is what they're talking about. They've, they've, got a, um, they've got a group, they've got a vector space, and then for each element of the group, they've, they've got a linear transformation of that vector space. And then the um, and the th the thing to say about these then anyways just let's just say so for G the G a finite group group V a fi finite let's just say V is just let's just can't say it's C C C N. Okay, so we're our, our vector space. Let's. So we're always. It, it turns out that theory of representations is actually easier over, over complex vector spaces. It's, but anyway, so if if your V is just n-dimensional complex space, then a representation of G on V is a bunch of a set of matrix a. Is a is um, a set of matrices we'll call pi of G, um, and so so these are the linear linear operators on on C n. So these are going to be n by n, n by n complex matrices, um, such that and and the, and, the, and you just have to, the fact that it's it's an action that 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 action thing that I just erased. 
is that if you multiply one, you multiply one of these matrices, the one corresponding to G1, you multiply it by the one corresponding to G2, you get the one that you would get if you multiply the group elements. So, so, so this, 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 is, this, is, this is the actual legitimate definition of a representation in the case where you have a finite group and, and it's acting on a finite dimensional vector space. And I, and I think one of, the early prob, one of the early problems, one of the problem sets is going to be to, 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 get, to get you to play with kind of one of the first non-trivial examples of this, where you're, you have a group that doesn't commute and you can kind of see what this is, but it, but in some sense, this becomes a very very concrete subject. This is really, concretely, this is just all about finding sets of matrices that, that satisfy this. Okay, and um, so it says okay, but but now, so anyway, so that's finite group. But now that the problem is that we're 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 interested in not in finite groups, but we're interested in groups that um like translations or rotations where you can um. We're, 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 we want to know what happens kind of infinitesimally. That you can you can have elements arbitrarily close to the identity, and so it's, and so these are going to be. So 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 a So y you can use the same definitions, but but let me let me just say this: a, a, a Lie group. So 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 a, a Lie group is really a group where you have an infinite number of elements and you have a notion of being close by and you and you can actually you can you can differ, differ, differentiate you can do kind of you can do kind of analysis on the Lie group so a Lie group is a um, the, the the technical way of saying it is, is a manifold fold with, 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 with where, where you can you can multiply points there's a lot more to say but So again, maybe, uh, so, so this is one place where we actually do have some geometry. If you've seen the, um, if you've seen some geometry, a, man, a manifold is just a general no, a general notion of a of a set of points which which form form, form a, a, there's an infinite dimensional number of them and they form a space which locally looks like R n, but not not globally. It's not you can't add you can't add two points, but but lo, 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 or you can only add two points kind of locally. And maybe let me just actually kind of draw a picture. So, so the picture you should have in mind is that a, a group is some a group is some some kind of nonlinear thing, some kind of set of points. And and but one the thing that's distinguished about a group and um and, and, and maybe it's a good idea to give an exa as an example. So an, an example would be. A non-trivial example would be that the group is, is, is SO3. And, and we'll say a lot more about this later, but this is just rotations. So you can ask, what are all the possible rotations of three dimensions? Well, they form a group. You can imagine what's, imagine each rotation as a point in the space, and you can ask, what is the space? Well, it's a, kind of hard to visualize. It's three it's a curved three-dimensional thing, which doesn't doesn't sit in three dimensions, but sits in higher dimensions. But 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 one thing which is always true of a group is that is that there's a distinguished point on the group, which is which is the identity. So let me put that here is the identity. And then what you're and then if you're what, what if you're interested in this question, which of kind of what what's happening infinitesimally, what does a infinitesimal transformation do? Then you can ask, okay, I want to just think about what's happening near the identity of the group, just infinitely close to the identity. And since it's a, man, a, a manifold by definition is a something which at each point, it, um, it has a thing called the, ta the tangent space that it, it, it looks like a vector space at each point. And as you get close to that, to, to the point in the neighborhood of a point, it's a, it, it has the behavior of a vector space. So here, this is going to be, if you're a, um, if you've seen a bunch of geometry before, I would I would call it I would say that this is the tangent space to G at, at the identity. That's this space. 
And so if we're just if we're just think so so this is all things of the form of the form one plus some epsilon x, let's say. So it's the identity plus some infinitely small time times some something called x, where x is some kind of thing that has a vector that's a vector, another kind of vector. Okay, and then now a Lie algebra. So, 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 so this this structure is what we call a, a Lie algebra. Okay, so, uh, so, 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 what the, so, 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 what I'm trying, what I'm, so, 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 the general kind of abstract nonsense is that we, unfortunately, we can't just do finite group theory like we would, which is, which is a nice, simple story. Unfortunately, we need to talk about Lie groups. Those are the ones which are going to be interesting for us. And if we're going to talk about, um, you know, the the infinite, so, so, what we're going to actually be talking about are representations of Lie groups. So, so there are going to be, again, th things that just behave this, like this. And then, then they're, they're going to be, um, but it, it turns out that, so we're interested in, in these kind of infinitesimal transformations. So we're interested in the Lie algebra of the group. We're interested in these kind of infinitesimal ver version of the, of, of the group. And we're interested in what happens to this representation of the Lie group if you look at it in terms of the Lie algebra. And so all of those words that I gave you saying that we're looking for, for a, a, a unit, unitary, unit, unitary means that these, these transformations are going to preserve a Hermitian inner product. That these are not going to be arbitrary linear transformations. They're going to preserve the inner product. That's what unitary means. Um, representation means that it's at the level of the group, it's doing this. And Lie algebra means that we're, we have to go to this linearized version of the group and, and work with that. And that's what and that's and that's what a unitary Lie algebra representation is going to be. It's going to be that get that gadget. And what we're going to find is that those the um, the operators that you get when you when you do that are going to be those are going to be the operators that correspond to, a, to the the observables in the in, in the quantum theory. Anyway, so I think run out of time. So so let me stop here. There's stuff that I said. Today, most of it's in the, in, in the first chapter that you've already seen. There's also some more detail. There's, there's, there's a bunch of things in there I have, didn't get to today. But again, the, the warning is that this, this is most supposed to be more, a very, very high level kind of overview of some very, uh, of kind of the abstract material we want to dig into over the next semester. So if you don't, if you don't, uh, anyway, if you're having trouble following us, that, that, that's normal. But we're going to start on on, on next Thursday, on in two days, I'm, I'm going to start going through all this, and we're, we're going to start with the simplest example then. So we're going to start with the example just that, that the group is what I would call it U of 1. It, it, it just, you think of all the, all the E to the I thetas for different theta, and you can, you can multiply them together, and, uh, and they form a group, and you can ask what's the Lie algebra, what's the representation of U1, and you get you you start to see a lot of the whole structure of this whole subject in a very simple context, and you also you also get some very very non-trivial facts about, um, you know, very interesting operators which which are kind of fundamental in physics. And the the other inter and, and this I think is is a, I kind of I realized it's a good place to start partly because it's um it, 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 it's something that the physics textbooks generally consider too easy that they don't. Um, physics textbooks generally start with something a much more complicated situation. This is a much simpler thing, and if you try and if you try and look for, if you try and look for this in a physics textbook, you probably won't find it. It'll be it'll have in some sense been done somewhere, but not explicitly. And so it's so I want to kind of start off with doing something very simple, very explicit, but, 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 but which, which really is gives you some really non-trivial facts about about physics. Okay. Okay. So that's. that's any quick questions before we go, or and then or if you come back in a little while, I'll have a, a bit of an office hour. No, nothing. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll stop now and uh, come back in about five minutes for the office hour, or um, or I'll see you again all again on on, on Thursday. Okay, thanks, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.
Bye.